Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is Saturday, September 3rd, 2022. Let's talk Andy Ruiz, Luis Ortiz, follow-up video. The original is still up, based on current odds. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, first, let me just say, it's Saturday, September 3rd. I will be at the uh, Stanford Colgate game. If you see a bald black man with a five o'clock shadow, it might be me. Feel free to come up to me and to say hi. We can talk sports for a couple of minutes. But, right, here's my own complaint, right? If you're going to ask me about what I find interesting betting-wise in the world of boxing or baseball or football, all I ask is that you be prepared to share your takes as well, right? Have takes. Tell me where you're coming from, right? Tell me why. Let's make it a two-way conversation, okay? Let's talk boxing, the casinos are smart. Don't think they aren't. Right? In my earlier video, I told you that I think Andy Ruiz wins this fight. <clears throat> well, the casinos have now made Luis Ortiz a plus 320 underdog. Right? Those are the odds, and this is said just for informational purposes only. Currently listed on a Canadian betting site called cloudbet.com. Right, Luis Ortiz plus 320. They're telling you that if these guys fought 4.2 times, Luis Ortiz would only win one of the 4.2. My point to you is grab the low hanging fruit. Right, first, you don't want to make just one bet on this fight. You want a betting portfolio. You want more than one bet, right? So you're covered. When the casino is telling you that Luis Ortiz, who, as of this video, has only lost to one man, and that's a heavyweight champ of five years, Deontay Wilder, <clears throat> right? And I would argue he's winning both fights when he gets stopped, right? Luis Ortiz has only lost to one man. Just understand when the casino is offering you a plus 320, even when you think the guy is going to lose the fight, in a fight that you know is competitive, let's be clear here, Andy Ruiz had to get off the canvas against Chris Ariola. right? Andy Ruiz has been playing musical chairs with his trainer, right? He keeps getting new trainers. Look at his history. You can't ignore the plus 320 bet, right? As I've said, I have nothing against looking at a fight, thinking to yourself, man, I'll be doggone. I was dead wrong about this fight. And then being able to collect at the end of the fight, right? The value play here, and this is from someone who thinks Andy wins the fight. The value play here is Luis Ortiz plus 320. That needs to be part of your betting portfolio. Now, we'll keep this simple, right? Ideally, ideally, I'd like to have Andy Ruiz for the second half of the fight. That's in an ideal world. Unfortunately, I live in the real world, not my dream world. Right. I also realized that Luis Ortiz gets dropped early, early against Charles Martin. So let's make this a simple play, but I need for you to understand this is not a safe play. You're in the speculative part of the Internet right now. Right. I lost on a similar bet in the Usyk Joshua fight. And I thought Usyk would win the fight. But I took the under 10 and a half rounds. And while there was a lot of action 
in the ninth round. And while there was a lot of action in the 10th round, that fight went the distance, right? Let's just say the action didn't develop in that fight until the later rounds. Here, being stubborn, being someone who at times is not a quick learner, right? I'm stubborn. I have my ways. While I'd prefer to have Andy in all of the later rounds, the current odds make it difficult. So, given that I feel that this is a fight between a man in his 40s against a guy who today, in my opinion, still has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. Given that I feel that Luis Ortiz is slowing down, he's down on the canvas twice against Charles Martin, twice. Given that I feel Luis Ortiz is slowing down, and given that I feel that Luis Ortiz does not have the legs to be on his bike for 12 rounds, like Anthony Joshua was against Andy Ruiz. And since I feel that Chris Ariola really is one of those special fighters, and he is special, who can maintain incredibly high volume for 12 rounds, which he did not just against Andy, but against Konotsky. Look at the punch that numbers for that fight. And since I don't expect that level of volume sustained volume from Luis Ortiz. I'm going to dance here with the under nine and a half rounds. Right, folks? I want folks to listen to my earlier video. Just understand, the odds have adjusted. If you're unable to get Andy Ruiz in the later rounds, well, this is gambling. I'm prepared to roll the dice on the under nine and a half rounds. I've listened to other pundits. I know everyone's saying, oh, well, you know, Chris Ariola went the distance with Andy. Okay, okay, fine. You know, Demetrenko did not. Understand, Joe Hanks did not. Right? I'm naming two guys who were highly thought of at times in their career. Understand, um, there's a former heavyweight champion, Chris Bird, who just knew that Joe Hanks, whose nickname was The Future, was going to be heavyweight champion. Right? Just understand, Andy has power. You want an example of a guy who was unable to go the distance with Andy Ruiz? How about Anthony Joshua, the first fight? Right, folks, Usyk has never dominated Joshua the way Andy Ruiz dominated Joshua that first fight. Multiple knockdowns. Joshua looking at his corner. The ref saying, walk to me. Joshua looking confused. Joshua looking for a way out. If you can't get out of the pocket against Andy Ruiz. And if you're not one of these freaks of nature, like a Chris Ariola, who went the distance, by the way, with Vitaly Klitschko. Right? In fact, he may not have. I'm, I'm just... <laughs> let's just say he went several rounds with Vitaly Klitschko. Right? If you're not a Chris Ariola type, who is accustomed to gunfights who's accustomed to high volume. If you're surgical, and that's who Luis Ortiz is, if you're surgical like Luis Ortiz and aren't accustomed to an opponent who's going to run red lights, you're at risk of getting stopped by Andy Ruiz. So here, having not learned my lesson, from the Usyk Joshua fight. While I think Andy's going to win, just understand this is the real world of gambling. I'm not taking Andy at a minus 417. 
There's not enough value there for me. So I'm going to take instead the value play. Luis Ortiz, plus 320. And I'm going to hedge the play with the under nine and a half rounds, which gives me nine full rounds and half of the tenth. My theory is that Luis Ortiz, who does have a punch, he has a shot at catching Andy. But I believe once they trade in the early rounds, and once Luis Ortiz figures out one of the secrets of the heavyweight division, which is that Andy has Ali-type hand speed. And I'm talking about younger Ali, not older Ali. I believe Luis Ortiz is going to find that he's all dressed up with nowhere to go. He doesn't have the back foot, the youth, to just dance around the ring for 12 rounds. Right? Let's give Anthony Joshua credit. Joshua is an athlete. I would say Joshua is a better athlete than Luis Ortiz. By the way, I'm not saying Joshua beats Ortiz. Let's remember, Ortiz is a lefty. I'm not saying Joshua beats Ortiz. Joshua, of course, just lost two fights to a lefty. Usyk. But what I am saying is you need to be an athlete with a back foot who can stick and move. Joseph Parker, one of the best athletes in the heavyweight division, to survive against Andy Ruiz. Right? Luis Ortiz at times looks like he can move, but let's face it. Deontay Wilder twice was able to benefit from the part of the fight where Luis Ortiz slows down. Right? Power is the last to go. Luis Ortiz still hits hard. But understand, coordination, the things that go into a back foot, are in jeopardy when you're in your 40s. So, I think Luis Ortiz is going to come out and he's serious when he says he wants to stop Andy Ruiz. Understand, if he succeeds, you hit on the plus 320. If he succeeds in the first nine and a half rounds, you hit on the under. If he fails... If he goes for the stoppage and then is winded by the fifth or sixth rounds, folks, the last person you want to be in the ring with, the last style, when you're tired and spent, is the guy with hand speed who's a combination puncher. Understand the difference between an Andy Ruiz and a Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather had the hand speed. But Mayweather was a pot shotter, right? Mayweather was the guy who, you know, would counter you with a hellacious left hook. It was blindingly quick, but Mayweather was defense first, right? Andy Ruiz is more Ray Leonard than Floyd Mayweather, Right? If you have slowed down and you're in your 40s and you're looking to take a round off and you don't have the legs to get away from the pocket and Andy Ruiz comes over and lands that first punch, folks, you're finished. Andy throws too fast for you to reach and hold him. Right now, I'll agree. There is a scary dynamic in this fight. If you're on the Luis Ortiz side of the play and you're covered if you take him at plus 320, right? If you're on the Luis Ortiz side of the play, Andy will be facing a southpaw. Right? In the moment, the punches come from angles you don't expect. Right? Again, the only guy to beat Luis Ortiz, the only guy, was Deontay Wilder. Right? Let's be real, too. Charles Martin, who dropped Luis Ortiz twice in Ortiz's last fight, is a southpaw. Here you have righty Andy Ruiz in against a southpaw who knows he's in his 40s. 
and who, of course, got off two knockdowns, got off the canvas twice to stop Charles Martin. Right? Stop him. And so, just to understand, Andy is going to be at risk early in this fight. While Ortiz is 100%, right, before his age starts to show, Ortiz is going to enter the ring at 100%. While Ortiz is 100% and while his angles are unfamiliar to Andy, and keep in mind, Ortiz does move, right? He does move. He's that KG vet. While things are unfamiliar, Andy, who hit the canvas against Chris Ariola, will be at acute risk. Once Andy solves the puzzle, I believe you're going to see blinding hand speed. I believe you're going to see Luis Ortiz in trouble. So from an odds perspective, since we live in the real world, I like Ortiz, plus 320, right? If he lands early, okay, more beer for me, right? Hedged with the under nine and a half rounds. Unlike many, I would not be surprised if Andy Ruiz closes the show in the middle rounds. I would ask that people look at Andy against Demetrenko, where Andy figures out Demetrenko, comes inside, and folks, it's a combination hand speed fest. Andy hits with power. If you don't believe that, then just ask yourself, what had Anthony Joshua hitting the ground multiple times? That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me warn everyone. I had the under 10 and a half rounds in that Usyk Joshua fight. Right? A fight where I thought Usyk was going to win. These over-unders can blow up on you. Right, You'll find yourself looking at the clock during the fight. Also, both of these guys are survivors in the heavyweight division. Right, If they're two guys who know how to deal with adversity, these are among them. Right? Andy Ruiz has fought Joseph Parker, has fought Anthony Joshua twice, has fought Chris Ariola, has fought Demetrenko. Right? Luis Ortiz is coming off a fight against a former heavyweight champion. And, of course, he's fought Deontay Wilder twice. Right? These are the KG vets who can get buzzed early in a round and can find a way to make it the other two minutes. But again, this is a guy in his 40s against a guy with the fastest hands in the heavyweight division who's not a pot shotter. He's a combination puncher. He's not Joe Calzaghe. His shots aren't pity pat type shots, right? He doesn't prioritize hand speed, even though he has the fastest hands in the division. This is a guy throwing power shots, right? Andy is dangerous. Don't fall for the good guy smiling for the camera persona. This guy's a killer. That's how I see the fight. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. In sum, I expect Andy to win. Because I'm a gambler, I'm not going to take the greater than minus 400 odds. I'm going to make this interesting. I'm going to take Luis Ortiz at plus 320. That covers me on the Ortiz side of the play. Hedged with the under 9.5 rounds at a minus 136. Those are the odds right now. My theory is that after Ortiz comes out and tries to establish himself, Andy Ruiz, once he figures out the angles, because he is fighting a complicated southpaw, will take over and make his hand speed an issue. Understand, Andy, I'm sure, knows that the hole in his game is his foot speed. I am positive that Andy, who obviously has, you know, kept himself in shape, right? And don't be fixated on what his body looks like. Understand, Larry Holmes, boxing, 
used to have champions who actually had some belly fat. I know that's shocking to a lot of people. Right? But boxers before Vladimir Klitschko used to actually have some fat on them. Right? Joe Fraser, who, if there was a guy prepared to go 15 rounds, not 12 rounds, 15 rounds, it was Joe Fraser. Right? You look at Joe Fraser's body, here's a guy who wasn't that big and wasn't that cut up. Now, we've forgotten that because we're in this ridiculous era where people look like bodybuilders. Right? But just understand, the same way Tyson Fury has some fat on him and yet is one of the better athletes at heavyweight. Right? Andy Ruiz has some fat on him. He has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. Reaction time is not an issue. The only issue is his foot speed. And I believe that rematch to Anthony Joshua, a guy who, quite frankly, Ruiz should have beaten, is the kind of wake-up call in your career where you realize, man, I could still be heavyweight champion. How did I lose that fight against that opponent? Right, needless to say... Eddie Hearn is talking about Dillian White. I don't expect Eddie Hearn to talk about having Joshua fight Ruiz again anytime soon because Andy has distinct advantages in that fight. So I believe after the Joshua rematch, Andy knows I've got to do something about my feet. Right? He doesn't have to be able to stay with Luis Ortiz every step of the way. What he has to do is to find a way to run over to Ortiz, like Golovkin did with Kell Brook. If Ruiz finds the way to cure his lack of foot speed, right, folks, this is the dark horse in the division. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me point out, too. I call Ruiz a dark horse in the division. I believe the division is Philippe Ergovic's to lose. Right? In the post Usyk Fury era. Right? I'm not sure if Usyk, who is in his mid-30s right now, sticks around the division should he beat. Tyson Fury, which I believe is a distinct possibility. Right? Tyson Fury is coming back from saying, hey, that's it for me. Right? I'm not sure if either of them stick around the division. In the next wave, I believe Ergovic is just too blessed in terms of spacing, distance, angles. Right? I believe the kind of fighter who gives Ergovic the worst possible matchup, is a fighter like Zhang, right? Heavy puncher. Zhang only has to be right once. Right? Zhang wasn't even completely right. It was Zhang's offhand that dropped Ergovic in their fight, right? Zhang's a southpaw. That's the other thing. Southpaws are dangerous. Right? Luis Ortiz would give Ergovic a tough fight. Right? Ergovic is smart enough and has enough length to stay away from Andy Ruiz. Right? Joseph Parker is another fighter I think has a chance to take over the heavyweight division. Joseph Parker fought Andy, was on his back foot. If that fight were in the United States, Andy would have been declared the winner. To this day, Ruiz believes he got jobbed fighting in Parker's backyard. Right? But understand, if you don't have the athleticism and the commitment to length that a Parker or an Ergovic has, you're in trouble against Andy Ruiz. Right? The world sees a guy who they want to ask about his weight and stuff like that. And Andy, quite frankly, by throwing away that Joshua rematch, has given people ammunition for questions like that. If 40-plus-year-old Luis Ortiz stops moving in this fight. Folks, he's going to be in trouble. That could happen in the middle rounds here. 
That's how I see it. Ortiz plus 320. I don't believe in overlooking low-hanging fruit. Right? You and I know Ortiz is dangerous. Right? Once the casino is up over a plus 200 and they're giving you a dangerous fight, you have to say, what? I got to look at this. Plus 300, that bet makes itself. Ortiz plus 320, hedged with the under nine and a half rounds. If you can buy, if you can buy the full 10th round, I would consider that. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.